This is the third section titled The Identity. We're going to be able to modify the default user in this section, restrict access, we're going to build a little web API, and we're going to review the built-in login solution in ASP.NET 5. This is the first video, customizing the user model. So we're going to add a couple fields. We're going to allow them to enter those fields during registration, and we're also going to deal with migrations in this video. So I want to preface this video by saying that Previously, we had discussed how it was very nice to just simply use the ensure created on the DB context. And it is. And in most cases, when it's just a pretty small application, that works really well. When it doesn't work is when you're building something much larger. And so that's where we're kind of digging in here. The first change I want to note is database.migrate instead of database.ensure created. The other reason that I went down the ensure created path initially is because I wanted to show you how to deal with kind of the messy situation where we didn't start with migrations but we started with just ensure created and we need to get this database to where we can actually execute migrations and so let's kind of walk down that path there's a few things to discuss you know as I said it's a little messy but I wanted to walk you through how you might get yourself to the point where you could be running migrations instead of you know dealing with the ensure created. So the first thing that we're going to do is come over here into the command prompt and let's just discuss at the moment all of the commands have already been run but I'm going to walk through them. The first thing that you would want to do if you hadn't been dealing with migrations is add a migration. And what that's going to do is create some code that gets your database up to date based on the previous set of migrations. So when we first started this project, there was a migration already added for the identity schema. But now we ad added a to-do table, and we also added a couple, or we're, we're going to add a couple new fields uh, to the profile. And in this case, you know, there was so much code to do, we're not going to do any live coding, so I'm really reviewing a lot of stuff that's already been done and then we'll it'll, it'll all plug in for you but anyway let's assume that we wanted to add a couple fields to the profile right so uh, in models in application user we added a city and a state so that's how we add new fields to the profile we simply modify the application user that is the identity user and drop a couple new fields on it so that's pretty straightforward. Now we need to get that stuff into the database. So over here, the command that you will run is dnx ef migrations add. And in this case, I gave it a name of to do underscore new profile fields. Okay. And what that's going to do is create a migration. It's going to read the differences between the previous set of migrations and the current state of the DB context. And it's going to create a migration based off of that. So what happened when I ran that command was I ended up with a migration right here. Okay. That did a couple of things. One, it created a to-do table. And two, it added the columns city and state. Okay. Now, here's the, the kicker, though. We started with ensure created. And so we have a problem. The problem is the database thinks that it's on version zero. So it thinks it needs to run this migration and this one. And in, I mean, in our case, that really isn't true because our database already had a to-do table. It already had the identity fields or tables. It just really needs these couple new fields. So we have a couple of problems we have to address. I'm gonna show you how we address them. So the first one is we need to let it know that it's already executed the identity migration. So to do that, what we did was we manually added this row, this first row, to the underscore EF migrations history table uh, that exists in our database. Now, these two fields come from a very specific place, so let me show you. You'll notice that this is a partial class, okay? And that's because there's another class that houses the model as well as the configuration information. 
So this first field, the migration ID, comes from here. And the second field, the product version, comes from here. So this is in that partial class. So again, here's the class that has the migration code. Here's that partial class that we're going to pull those values from. So that gun is pretty close to being able to execute this migration. But we had still one problem. And that is that the to-do table already existed. And this line of code here will fail. Unfortunately, there is no way to create a table if it only exists or doesn't exist. So the workaround here, unfortunately, isn't very pretty, but, but it works. The first time I ran the application, I had to comment this out. So that way it created the city and state fields. And then I had to come back and uncomment this. Hopefully in the future, you know, the migrations will progress and, and grow. And um, the migration team will be able to have something that's better than that. So we added the two new fields, right? And we got the migrations handled, got the database up to date. We still needed to modify the view models, though, because we wanted to be able to enter the city and state during registration. So same as usual, dropped them here onto the view model. And then, of course, we need to modify the views. And so down here on the register view, we added a couple new fields for city and state. And so now, when we register a user, we're able to get the city and state put into place. So as you can see, uh, I registered uh, myself as a user. If we view this data, you'll notice that at the end of this record is the city and state. Well, I hope that this video hasn't been too overwhelming. I know a lot happened with migrations. They're pretty tough in EF7, very different than they were in EF6, much more manual. 